don't nothing make a racist person more nervous and uncomfortable than a black person that's too quiet or that's not friendly. Even little stuff like if you're not smiling, they say little slick stuff like smile. You know what I'm saying? And <laughs> Yo, somebody said earlier that all we do is talk about white people all day. Somebody said that in the comment earlier in one of the videos, man. All we do is talk about white people. Why is this brother talking about this? I and listen, he has he has freedom to talk about whatever he wants to on social media. It's just odd, man. Like, what the fuck is he? What, why is he talking about this? Salute the Southern Star, man. Southern Star. He says, "Shout out Ah and the Nation. Keep it up, brother." Why is this guy talking about this, man? This shit don't even make no fucking sense, man. Like, honestly, man, I mean, what makes a racist person mad? When the fuck do you ever come across a racist person, man? When do you come across a racist person? And who's going to be racist to you? They don't know if you're a killer or a carjacker. They don't know what you're on. You a son man, man. Ain't nobody coming up to you being racist. The only way somebody could be racist is if you engage them or pick on them and then they defend themselves. And of course, you're going to call them defending themselves racist. Press one. That's the only racism you could possibly get. Don't nothing make a racist person more nervous and uncomfortable than a black person that's too quiet or that's not friendly. Well, <laughs> too quiet, man. <laughs> I'm looking for where those black people at, man. <laughs> hey, can somebody point me to the black people that's too quiet man? <laughs> in public? I'm looking for them, man. I want to see them, man. Where the black people that's too quiet? Where y'all at? All my black people that's too quiet. Star Scorpio Production says, respect from Toronto. Long time listener. <coughs> Car days. Best hosting panel on YouTube. I heard my city mentioned yesterday. I got a link for you that breaks down one of Toronto gang wars. Email it to me now. I can tune day live to at gmail.com. Email it to me now. We're going to get to Toronto today, man. There's some video, some stuff from Toronto I wanted to do. Email it to me now. I just put like, like title it Toronto. Don't nothing make a racist person more nervous and uncomfortable than a black person that's too quiet or that's not friendly. Even little stuff like if you're not smiling, they say little slick stuff like smile. You know what I'm saying? And I done told y'all before about an old job I had years back. I got pulled into the office one time and I'm thinking something wrong and they end up telling me, oh, you know, nothing's wrong. You're doing a great job. You're just, you're not talkative. You know, is everything okay? And that's more of a, uh, I'm afraid type of thing. And the reason behind this, these folks are very hateful. maybe, maybe. So the, the racist hired you. So 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 you had a job, and these racist people hired you, and then they asked you if you could open up. <laughs> think about this, Gladys. I think it's very important for Gladys to understand this. These alleged racists, because he said this is how you make racist people mad. These alleged racists hired him. And then when he came on the job site being antisocial, they inquired and they engaged him and they tried to get him to open up. And fraternize with the rest of the...
don't nothing make a racist person more nervous and uncomfortable than a black person that's too quiet or that's not friendly. Even little stuff like if you're not smiling, they say little slick stuff like smile. You know what I'm saying? And I done told y'all before about an old job I had years back. I got pulled into the office one time and I'm thinking something wrong and they end up telling me, oh, you know, nothing's wrong. You're doing a great job. You're just, you're not talkative. You know, is everything okay? And that's more of a, a I'm afraid type of thing. And the reason behind this, these folks are very hateful. They're very conniving. They're very sneaky. And they constantly got this paranoia that this karma of what they put out is going to come back on them. So what they put out by giving you a job, <laughs> they, they conniving and sneaky and scared that the karma of giving you a job to pay your bills and buy your weed and shit and trick on your hoes. They paranoid that that karma is going to come back on them. Okay. Very hateful. They're very conniving. They're very sneaky. And they constantly got this paranoia that this karma of what they put out is going to come back on them. So with every black person that they can't read because they always trying to read us and get to know how they can play with us and deal with us. And we... Yeah, man. Hey, white people, are y'all always trying to read black people, man? It's... <laughs> See how you can play with us and deal with us? Is that what you guys are doing, man? Oh, my gliders. Are you always trying to read us? I don't know. <laughs> Salute to Mr. Clockwork, man. He says, ah, thanks for your work, buddy. Also, please Google Jalen Perkins. He's an 11-year-old hero in Chicago. Fought for his mom. What a hero, kid. Give that young man attention to her. Yeah, we did him last night. Is that the, the boy who died? We're going to do something on him today, too. We did him last night. We did that story last night. Um, Such a, such a heart-wrenching story man but that's the same that's the same kid said Jalen Perkins in Chicago Yeah, we're going to get on that today, man. Yeah, what a sad story, man. Um, and we don't give them that, they get uncomfortable because now it's, is this my karma that I'm worried about? Is this person going to try to do something hateful to me the way that I do hateful stuff? You get what I'm saying? And so that's... <laughs> He's talking about people he doesn't know. He's just assuming that every white person does hateful things and deserves all this karma. Yo, he says being quiet is scary, but I think him talking is scary. Press one. The things he's saying, if I'm a glider, they're terrifying. Like, there's a there's a lot large contingent of some men that walk around feeling like this about you, that you deserve something. That you deserve something for all the evil things you've done. And they're willing to, and they're going to um, set the,
It's terrifying. So that's what you come across a lot of the times. We not hateful or nothing like that. We just trying to avoid all the bullshit. We know these games they're trying to play, and we just want to be left alone. But with them, it's all in their head now because it's like, this black person must know what I'm really about. They might want to hurt me. They might want to do the hateful shit that I'll do to <laughs> people. You know what I'm saying? This is just the paranoia to go in their head and why they feel so uncomfortable with black people that they can't read. That they can't, you know, know how to play with. And we're just trying to avoid the bullshit, bro. Because we understand the game. <laughs> yeah. This is terrifying, man. Yo, this is terrifying. Yo, this is scary, man. Because you know, I this is a son, man. Man, this brother might be bout it, bout it. Man. <laughs> this, brother, this brother might be with the shits, man. <laughs> he a son, man. You never know, man. This is terrifying, man. I'm going to play it all the way through, man, just so you can hear it. This is horrifying if you're glad if you think about that there's there's probably like 20 million people in this country what is 40 million sons at least 20 million of them think somewhere along this spectrum press one at least 20 million of them i could go higher but i'm just being conservative at least 20 million sons think somewhere along this spectrum Don't nothing make a racist person more nervous and uncomfortable than a black person that's too quiet or that's not friendly. Even little stuff like if you're not smiling, they say little slick stuff like smile. You know what I'm saying? And I done told y'all before about an old job I had years back. I got pulled into the office one time and I'm thinking something wrong and they end up telling me, oh, you know, nothing's wrong. You're doing a great job. You're just, you're not talkative. You know, is everything okay? And that's more of a, a I'm afraid type of thing. And the reason behind this, these folks are very hateful. They're very conniving. They're very sneaky. And they constantly got this paranoia that this karma of what they put out is going to come back on them. So with every black person that they can't read, because they always trying to read us and get to know how they can play with us and deal with us, and we don't give them that, they get uncomfortable. Because now it's, is this my karma that I'm worried about? Is this person going to try to do something hateful to me the way that I do hateful stuff? You get what I'm saying? And so that's what you come across a lot of the times. We not hate for nothing like that. We just trying to avoid all the bullshit. We know these games they're trying to play. And we just want to be left alone. But with them, it's all in their head now because it's like this black person must know what I'm really about. They might want to hurt me. They might want to do the hateful shit that I'll do to people. You know what I'm saying? This is just the paranoia to go in their head and why they feel so uncomfortable with black people that they can't read, that they can't, you know, know how to play with. And we just trying to avoid the bullshit, bro, because we understand the game. We know that they trying to play games and say little slick stuff to see how far they can go. And so we just ain't about to be talkative. We ain't about to laugh and kick it. And that's just how the game goes.